What? It's time now for My Two Favorite Librarians. Brought to you by Copper Tree Boutique in Dale's Grand Market, located in beautiful, historic downtown Amherst. Hi, this is My Two Favorite Librarians. I'm Denise Corey. I'm Chantelle Taylor, and today we're talking about historical fiction. So let's also talk about Stay at Home and Read Atlantic. Yes. So uh, the Atlantic Publishers Marketing Association and the government of Nova Scotia is providing us with some funding. We have five titles. They are available on Overdrive, which you might also know as Libby. And it's one book a week. There's no holds, no waiting. You can download it right away. And this week is Crow by Amy Spurway, which I started to read. I didn't love it, but Jelana... Our yeah. friend Jelana loved it. And we saw Amy Spurway at Lunenburg Lit in September, and she was a really interesting, engaging reader. So, yeah, I encourage you to check it out. And then the next few weeks will be Mercy, Mercy by Marlene Stanton, Quarantine, What's Old is New, Halifax and the Lawler Island Quarantine Station, 1866 to 1938. I don't know that I'm going to read no. that. No. Making It Home by Allison Delory. And then the last week is Silver Linings, Stories of Gratitude, Resiliency, and Growth Through Adversity, which I think I'm going to read. So... You can find more information about this on our website. There's a link, www.cumberlandpubliclibraries.ca. It's like you're trained. I know. <laughs> it's because you are trained. It's like you gave me treats or something. I me. should have a clicker. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I think it's good. It's interesting. These are all books from Atlantic Publishers. So, you know, we're supporting local publishers at the same time that, you know, you're home, so you might as well read <laughs> and stop watching so much YouTube crap. Well, some of that YouTube is good. Mm. Sure it is. <laughs> uh, do you want to talk about Hoopla? Sure. So we signed our contract with Hoopla. They did it in double time. They were super, super fast about it because they're really trying to help a lot of libraries get online right now. So Hoopla is another service that we offer. You can find it on our website, www.cumberlandpubliclibraries.ca. I'm not saying it again. (laughs) I'm going to try now to make you say it again. Um, So Hoopla has... Audiobooks, ebooks, music, TV shows, and movies. But you only get five borrows a month because the cost to us, to the library, depends on how many things people borrow. So we want to see how much this is going to cost us before we kind of open it up too much. But five a month, you can get some pretty interesting stuff on there. And I searched for homeschooling information on there, and they have some like tutorials, like video tutorials on like Algebra 1. So if you're homeschooling right now and trying to explain algebra, (laughs) or maybe need a tutorial yourself, because I would, I don't remember algebra. That's all with the letters, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, somewhere a math teacher is crying. Well, that's why we went into librarianship. There's little math. Yeah. Most of my math is just budget math. It doesn't require any, you know, cosine, sign. On a good day, I can make change. That's important. (laughs) So, yeah, we have Hoopla now. So, in terms of what you can access from the library right now, we have Overdrive, which is downloadable audiobooks and ebooks. We have RB Digital, which is magazines, and now Hoopla, which is audiobooks, ebooks, music, movies, and television shows. So lots of good stuff. If you don't have a library card, because that's all you need to access these, you can get one. You can fill out a form on our website. No. <laughs> Come on, say it. Do no. it. Do it. No. Uh, um, and we will sign you up for one right away. We'll give you your number and we will mail the card out to you. So this week we're talking about historical fiction. Yes. Do you want to? 
<laughs> Do you want to talk about the book that you're reading right now that you gave me a little preview of on our podcast? Oh, also, we started the podcast. You can find a video of My Two Favorite Librarians at Home on our Facebook group. Which, which is, is called, called My, My Two, Two Favorite, Favorite Librarians. Librarians. Spelled the correct Canadian way. Okay. So I started to read The Magnolia Sword, The Ballad of Mulan by Sherry Thomas. And I literally just started to read it yesterday. We're recording this on Thursday. So I've only read maybe like 10 pages. But I haven't been reading much. So it's a bit of a struggle for me to read anything. And I, I think I'm going to keep going, which is a good sign. I love Mulan, the Disney movie. I was very much looking forward to the live action Disney movie, even though there was no Shan in it. But I think they've pushed back the release now. Oh, they've pushed back everything, yeah. Yeah, they pushed it back to like next year. Yeah, which is very sad. But um, I think this is a J or a YA. I forgot to look up and see what it was. Book. So it's not for adults. But it, well, well, I mean, it is for adults, <laughs> but I mean, you could also. You, you know, could share it with your kids exactly. who you are home with right now. Exactly. And it's written by Sherry Thomas, who wrote the Lady Sherlock books, which I have to say I didn't love. I read the first one and I really hated. I think it's Charlotte was the main character that was... I'm not a big... I mean, I like the Sherlock TV shows, but I'm not a big fan of I just... A lot of the things I find when they're writing Victorian women, she's supposed to be this super, super smart woman, and yet she's a complete idiot. (laughs) And I realize there's a certain... Well, here we go. Historical fiction, because this is technically more historical fiction. I realize there are different types of smart. There's book smart. And they're street smart. And I understand. And then there's the kind of smart that I am, which is all of the smart. And as a Victorian (laughs) woman. And you just (laughs) ignore it. (laughs) You would be, and as a woman of privilege, because she was a lady, so they would Mm. be like well off, you would be hidden from a lot of the things that were going on in the world. But I just, I was like, ugh. But again, maybe that's coming from the 21st century looking back at... Obviously, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm like 100 pages in to Les Miserables. Nice. Yeah. So it's almost 1,300 pages, so I have a ways to go. So you're like (laughs) 0.001% through the book. Into the book. Um, And... It's not like a fast, easy read because it's, you know, it was published in 1865. It's still historical fiction because he's writing about 1812. So, (laughs) but yeah, like the way that language was written at that time and trying to read it now, it's not like a breezy, like just flip through the pages kind of It's not a beach read. No. Well, first of all, it's not a beach read because it weighs a ton. It would block the sun out. Yeah. So it's on my bedside table, and my cat knocked it off the other day at, like, in the middle of the night. And you thought there was a gunshot? Because cats are jerks. And it was just like, what? What was that? So one of my podcasts the other day, they had back-to-back super interesting podcasts. So one of my favorites is You're Wrong About, and it's kind of like a debunking podcast where they take these cultural events and they look at them now. So the two episodes that I listened to last week were the Ford Pinto and Marie Antoinette. Oh. And so of course like they were talking about Marie Antoinette and saying like the most famous thing that we know about her is let them eat cake. Yes. Which she did not even say. Yes. It was propaganda in the paper but yet Like, how many ever years later, hundreds of years later, that's what we know about Marie Antoinette. So you should post that link in... I'll uh, do that. It's a really good... My Two Favorite Librarians Facebook group, and then other people can listen. It's a really good podcast, because they're younger. I would say they're in their 30s. And... um, Younger is such a relative term. I know. I know. (laughs) They're not like... 21. Yeah. They're both journalists and they're very dry sense of humor. Love it. And uh, it makes me question everything. Like, I wasn't a newspaper reader before. I am less of a newspaper reader now because I'm just like, lies. It's all lies. Some of it is lies. Not all of it is lies. 
depends on what you're reading, too. I don't know. You should um, triangulate your sources so that you're getting your news from different things. I don't think Hearst ever said that. (laughs) So, so far this year, I've read 28 books. I'm still on 17. (laughs) And 22 of them uh, were pop sugar reading challenge categories. So, uh, but now I'm reading Les Miserables. So that will be your last book. It's um, it's often split up into five different volumes. So I'm wondering if I can count it as five books. <laughs> I'm looking for validation. So I, you know, Chantel is just like giving me like a nonplussed look. So I want to hear what other people think. <laughs> should I count Les Miserables as five books, or should I just count it as one? How about some historical fiction I read earlier this year? Go for it. Vanessa and Her Sister by Priya Par- Parmar. Sorry. It's primarily written from the point of view of Vanessa Bell, niece Stephen. So she was Virginia Woolf's sister. Oh. And was part of that whole Bloomsbury group. And I knew a little bit about the Bloomsbury group, but this is like her diary and her letters so it's like a very intimate look at her and her relationship with Virginia Woolf and I I don't know how they ever found time to write or paint or do all these like artsy things that they were supposed to be doing because they were all like picking up each other's spouses and the, going off to asylums and there was just there I, it was like craziness Well, depending on what kind of status they were at or economic level they were at, if you were running your own household while you were busy, you would still have time to do leisure things. Well, and they were relatively well off. So they were, yeah, yeah, okay. So Because, like, if you were incredibly poor or, like, lower class, then you wouldn't have time for anything. They had servants and... Yeah, so they would have some leisure time and they just weren't, like, embroidering cushions. They were, like, writing things. No, but I just mean, like, the fact that so-and-so was sleeping with so-and-so's husband and then there was That doesn't take much time. (laughs) And then you write about it. It's all (laughs) fodder for the book. (laughs) I'm also right now listening to The Dutch House by Ann Patchett, which is her newest book. On the audiobook, it's read by Tom Hanks. I know I've mentioned this before, but he's really good. He's a really good reader. So this book takes the takes place over several decades. It starts just after World War I and it focuses on the Conroy family, but most especially the children, Danny and Maeve, and how they grow up and how, you know, their mother leaves them and how that forms their whole life. It's it's a it's really interesting. I'm almost done. So that'll be another book for me. Ha. Ah. Not reading anything. I'm sad for you. Maybe it'll come around. I'm sad for you. I downloaded all these books and I'm scared to read half of them because everything I read is just like becoming a disaster. It's like, no, I don't like this. Yeah, it's making So I'm trying to get, I don't know, further away from the beginning of this, Hmm. closer to the end before I start reading things again. I don't know. Maybe you could just read magazines. No, I don't want to waste my time or my hands flipping through magazines when I could be knitting. Mm. Yeah. You really should have gone to see a chiropractor before we got locked down. I don't know that that would have helped. Mm -hmm. So what are you reading right now? So You must be reading, besides Mulan. Yes. Which, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the title of that book I believe it's, I don't have it right in front of me, but I think it's called The Magnolia Sword, The Ballad of Mulan by Sherry Thomas. Yeah. So are you reading anything else besides that? So I talked about yesterday that I was reading Taking the Heat by Victoria Dahl, which is a contemporary romance and not loving it. I disliked both characters. Allegedly, the sexy time is supposed to be off the chart marvelous. I don't care. I don't like these people. Don't, don't, don't make yourself read something that you're unhappy about. 
I've read other books in this world because there's a couple of series that take place in this little town. It's like Jackson Hole or something like that. Wyoming, I can't remember. It's like some little town. It's like a ski town or something. Right. And they've been okay. I've enjoyed them. They're fun. They're not heavy. There's not necessarily a lot of angst in them. It's like silly things. So in this one, the main character, she went off to New York to do whatever. I still haven't figured out what it is her career was supposed to be that she went to New York for. And she's come home because she couldn't hack it in New York. And she's like taken this job as an advice columnist, but she really doesn't have any like, she's a virgin. She's like at home, like she doesn't have the right experience to really be doing this advice column so she's faking it and I'm just like there's a lot of tropes happening here and allegedly according to Faded Mates it all works well together but I just that really just makes her sound like yeah (laughs) ridiculous so yeah that's not a book I'm gonna read and the thing is You just came back from Manhattan to your small town where everybody knows you. Everybody knows that you're back from Manhattan. What do you think you're hiding from people? You've obviously not made any money. You're living in one of your father's rental units. What do you think people don't know about you? Yeah. Like, it's a small town. And especially if it's a small town where you've grown up. Yeah. Yeah. They know everything. Exactly. Like, it just seems ridiculous that she's hiding something. And like, so what? You didn't make it in Manhattan. Everybody knows that already. Get on with it. Lots of people don't make it in Manhattan. Well, and you could just be like, I didn't like living there. There's nothing wrong with that. Not everybody is a New York person. Exactly. I suspect strongly that I would not be a New York person. (laughs) Those big cities are like hard. If you're I mean, not. I have not been to New York City, but I assume that I would like to go as a tourist and then leave. It's like Toronto. I like going to Toronto. There are really good yarn stores. There are, you it's know, really it's good food. fun. Yeah. And there's lots of stuff going on. But after like a week, I'm done. Well, and also, and this book was written years ago this isn't specifically talking about generation z or millennials but c z anywho it doesn't take a year to make it it takes a long time we're ranting about things we shouldn't be ranting about (laughs) so the book i'm reading right now this is also going to make you angry (laughs) Uh, you're not going to read this book don't read this book it's called this little light by Lori lanson's I love her writing. I really love her writing. Um, This book is a bit difficult for me. I'm listening to it. I bought it from Audible. It's set in the near future where the religious right is now in charge of the United States. So a lot of laws are being made that are rolling back women's rights. And the main character has gone to a purity ball and things go very, very badly there. And then she and her best friend are considered to be domestic terrorists because of something that happened at the purity ball and they're on the run. And she is holed up in a shed with a laptop writing this account of what has happened. And it's just so distressing. (laughs) that I can only listen to it a bit at a time because I just think we're so close to that actually being reality. It's kind of like Handmaid's Tale happening in slow motion. I just... See, I knew, like, if you could see her face, <laughs> like, even from feet away, I can see you rolling your eyes. <laughs> I just don't understand why. I just... Ugh. Yeah, so it's a fairly disconcerting read for me. But like I said, Lori Lanson's she's an excellent writer. She really paints a vivid picture. And I like how she's characterizing this main character because she is this privileged teenage girl. So there's a lot of things that she says, and you're just like, yeah, that's a young woman of privilege who is speaking. But she's also very bright and also sees that the world is not fair to women in particular. 
But you would hate it. Don't read it. Uh, don't, I don't. can't even with that right now. On my best day, I couldn't even. <laughs> what are we talking about next week? Next week, we're going to talk about books published in the year 2000. I'm going to give us a throwback. Okay. So that we can talk about, like, what were you doing in the year 2000? I was still in school in 2000. I might have just started my master's. Yeah. 20 years ago. Right? I was 26. Uh, Yeah. So it'll be fun to talk about being 26. And remember that whole thing where you used to leave the house (laughs) 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 and go places? (laughs) If you want more, and you may not, that's fine. (laughs) You can find us. On Facebook at uh, my two favorite, well, Cumberland Public Libraries, and we have a group called My Two Favorite Librarians. We're doing a Wednesday podcast. You don't have to watch, which we don't know what we're doing. So it's also not edited by Ron, so it don't sound as good. Yeah, you you can really tell that it's not edited because, (laughs) well, primarily because I have no editing tools with which I'm not allowed to swear. Yeah. You're not allowed to swear on the radio either. Yeah, but Ron could cut it out if I slip. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. My Two Favorite Librarians. Brought to you by Copper Tree Boutique in Dales Grand Market. Located in beautiful, historic downtown Amherst.